graduate of music, theory, and composition, and by the time Woodstock happened in 1969, he had been recognized as a, a founder of black psychedelic rhythm and blues music. Here is Sly Stone. <laughs> Oh, looking good. <laughs> yeah, that's really to get. I was supposed to ask you if Sly is your real name, but I ran into your dad backstage yeah. and he cued me on the Stuart. name. Stuart. No, he said Sylvester. Well, that's my last name, Stuart. Oh, Sylv uh, Sylvester Stuart. Then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sounds like him. He just took three of the letters out of Sylvester and came up with Sly. A uh, guy made a mistake in school. You know, we were in about the fifth grade and the teacher's name was Mrs. Edwards. And he was trying to spell my name. It had so many syllables and he misplaced the first three letters in his mind, I guess. And he came up with S-L-Y, and they laughed. <laughs> and I guess maybe they're still laughing. But I'm stuck with the name, Sly. I think I started even acting like it after that. <laughs> <laughs> acting mischievous yeah. and living up to it. Yeah. This is a great album cover. I want to show that. Thank you. Sly and the Family Stone. You don't do much of this. You don't, I don't see you on, on talk shows. At well, least I haven't as yet. I'm very pleased that you chose to be with us. I, I had a reputation of not showing up. For a lot of things. <laughs> you know, that's the truth. Yeah. And, you know, and, uh, How did that reputation come about? From, from uh, not showing up. <laughs> <laughs> what what but, would happen that would uh, delay you? Well, a number of things. I think maybe a third of, a third of which were my fault. And well, well maybe like, all of them really, because I had, I think, the wrong kind of uh, road organization, the wrong kind of, uh, you know, just the wrong organization. I, I, I thought I'd started off with the group and the people in the group, and I could handle that much. But then after a while, you got to go to other cities and other places. And we were all kind of local and locally minded, and not loco, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, because we had to go so many places, and then we got hooked up with other people and other things, and it was just too much for me to keep in order. I had trouble handling a B flat there for a while. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and now it's easier. Huh? Yeah. What What yeah. do you do when you don't show up? And I and I've read about some of these things that have happened to you, where the place will be just jammed full of people. Well, right? and you the, don't show up. You know, I mean. I it, try to go back. I always try to go back and play for the people, but usually the promoter involved, and he has his you know money to make, I guess wants only for us to come back and play and then for him to charge again. But on most occasions, where I didn't show up. Uh, one main incident in Chicago, I was there, but the riot was already on. You know, <laughs> they were already... Was uh, just the stadium, Chicago Stadium? Yeah. I mean, they were fighting, and when I got there, it was, but I was supposed to be there at 6 o'clock or something. And what time and did you get there? At 3.30. 3.30? And yeah. You, and you were supposed to start playing at 6? Yeah. But, but on the radio, they had it that I was supposed to play at 3. Oh, but I had a contract that said 6 o'clock. And at 3.30, I was there, and there were uh, armed, uh, you know, uh, what do you call those wagons? The National caps, Guard? The caps, the cops. Oh, paddy yeah. wagons. Paddy wagons, yeah. I hate to say that word. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't like the ring of it. Sly, what's it like to walk on stage at Madison Square Garden? I mean, all, you, you know, Mike, that's, if you have Sly's name on on any uh, billboard saying Madison Square Garden, one poster in New York, and you will fill Madison Square Garden. That's right. I mean, that, what uh, must it be like to, I mean, you've, and you've done it. What is it like to walk on stage and know that everyone there so respects the music, which is deserving of all the respect. But what do you, do you, do you as they say, get off on it? I mean, do you really? Yeah, it turns you on. And then you have to deal with yourself to make sure you're not too turned on. You know, because What these, happens when you're too turned on? I, I don't know of a time when I can, I, that I can place that feeling on. I, all I know is that I realize from uh, talking to other entertainers and that you have, there must be at a, a certain, at a time, you got to deal with yourself and make sure that you remember that you're a human being and not any super anything, as long as you can remember that you are just a human being. Mm -hmm. And so that is the only thing in, in your mind I'm, you know, you go up there and you play, I'm human, I'm human. 
And then you Man. play as, you know, you play as good as you can. I wonder how many of the people know what we're talking about. I know that I, I've been within, you know, earshot of some of these things where you could hear what's going on. I yeah. mean, uh, taking my children and what have you, you know. Yeah. And it's incredible. I mean, I don't know how the performers can hear what they're doing between screams. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It gets difficult. Yeah. Sometimes you even have to, uh, you know how you ask for audience participation? Well, at a place like Madison Square Garden, which would more than likely be full if we played. How many people would that be? 18,000, 20,000, something like that. And when all those people do that, you have to kind of uh, work with the people then, because they take over. You know, and all of a sudden. They, they set yeah. the beat, they kick it off yeah. with the beat. So yeah, they yeah. also want to create their own event. Right. Yeah. They, yeah. they, they want to. But as long as they can do that, then it's good. Yeah. You know? What do you do when you want to get away from it all and relax? Do you have a, an outfit you wear or, or a mask you wear or what? I mean, really, seriously. Yeah. I got what do you mean an outfit do you wear? Like in, no, no, no. Rubber, rubber, rubber chicken feet. feet. Yeah, I mean right. like an old beat up glasses no. and a nose and Well, fins on your feet, you know, <laughs> yeah. scuba equipment, anything. I mean just an old fur coat or something. You know? I, I think I just walk fast. <laughs> do you? <laughs> there was sly. No, I, I got I got a house in Mill Valley and I got an apartment in New York and a place in LA that are kind of secluded. Um, Where do you spend most of your time of your time? I know you flew in from San Francisco today. And I got to go back to L.A. tonight, and then Hawaii Saturday. So most of my time is really spent probably in an airplane. You know? <laughs> Trying to get back yeah. before. It's getting much better now, though, because I make all my gigs. <laughs> so like when you book yourself, is that it? Yeah. What'd well, you do really, you know, my manager books, but it's oh. myself. Would you do a movie if, uh, if, it were, if there were the right part came along? And yeah, I'm waiting on that. You're interested I, I in keep, I keep seeing scripts, but I don't think I fit in the scripts that I've seen. What kind of character do you see yourself playing the first time out? The star. <laughs> <laughs> and, you're, and you're the star <laughs> uh, No, I, I, I had an idea for a movie. <laughs> and then as soon as I get somebody to get it all together... What is the uh, idea? Well, should I say my idea? Somebody will steal my idea. <laughs> You've got to protect it, haven't you? That's what I mean. <laughs> uh, no, I just had an idea where, uh, I'll just say it, and if it happens, somebody else did it. If I don't have another idea, then I'm not creative. I got to deal with myself on that level. That's great. Right? Yeah. That's a nice I, attitude. I, I thought maybe that uh, if there were a movie and the uh, uh, black people were, if it were, you know, it's got to be people that's got black people, a movie that's got black people who are white people in it. And it's got to deal with that. But on this level, the movie should be maybe 2009 or so. And it should be... The uh, year 2009. Right, now. right. And it should show how it would be if, in fact, black people were the majority and these black people in this movie were not prejudiced. Since that seems to be the problem that I see. Uh, well, if... The black people were the majority. What would they say? So you know, and, I've, and everybody thinks, including most black people, that you know, they'd be the majority and they'd act like it. Uh -huh. Like I believe that the majority of white people do, and they can't help that. Uh -huh. They are. If you are, you gotta you, you lie to yourself. You don't know, act like you are. You think you think that the majority of black people would not be prejudiced like, like the majority of white people are. I think this would have a lot to do with the majority of black people at that time. Uh -huh to show a movie and to let it, to let it explain. It would be self-explanatory at this. Sly, you have a big, uh, a huge black following, and on top of that, you have all the middle-class white kids who also, I mean, they will flock to see you, and, and very few people do, do both of those. I mean, you're, because you're always in your own space, in your own time, which is really very special. Do you, do you have any feeling about those, those the white middle-class kids who come in? Do they, do they know what you're singing about? Yeah, they, they do. I love them to death, man. Good. That's yeah, they know what's happening. <laughs> what do you do? I'm, curi I'm curious about, do you think about the future at all, about the fact that the bubble may burst someday? Are you taking care of your, 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 your bread? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. I thought so. You going to do Tune for us, I hope? Oh. Good. <laughs> Here's Sly <laughs> Stone. <laughs> Two, three.
Your number, uh, Peter Calvary is my, my director, photographed that beautifully. But when you finished, you hadn't rehearsed, see, with the group. But you just get up and walked away, and everybody's gone. He's there somewhere. He's there. <laughs> you have one, too? You know, you hear them screaming. Yeah, we had it all together. The bass player started ad living. That's good, man. It's really good. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please stay, because I know you haven't done any talk shows, and I'm so pleased that you're here. Thank you. I really have. Thank you. Sly, thank you so much for being with us. Come back soon. Will Gear, thank you. Promotional fee paid by National Airlines. National applies the new DC-10s to more Florida cities than any other airline. Guests of the Mike Douglas Show stay at the Independence Hall Holiday Inn in Philadelphia. It's always a, thr a thrill to present the best in any category, and today we have with us the best host in a game show on daytime TV, and the best daytime host or hostess from Hollywood Squares, Emmy Award winner, Peter Marshall. No, 
I did this for Sly. Oh, I see. I always come out in the, nice and that. Right, I always have the clothes and the jazz, and I figured I came down this way in the limo, and I had the nice suit and everything, and I saw Sly, and I said, hey, no, this is the way I go. And this is the way you dress at rehearsals. Yeah, tonight, sure. Because I've seen you on NBC that way. Hey, congratulations. <laughs> Thank I'm you. winning. Thank you very much. It's I, a good feeling, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I don't know what I won. What do you mean you don't know what you won? I don't know what I won. The, the Emmys were friends. so confusing. A lot of friends. Oh, thank you, Sly. Yeah. I hope yeah. I've had those for some time. But, yeah. you know, there were so many different categories this year. And uh, you were up and I was up. And Dinah, I, I wound up against Dinah. And uh, we don't even do the same type show. And Are you proposing any changes for next year? I was, uh, when they said, let's have a daytime uh, Emmy Awards. I said, that's a great idea. And I went that's in to idea. the Academy. Doggone right. You know, we work hard as you work hard, and I, daytime does I believe work it. Hard too, man. That's right. <laughs> you, it's are an amazing. You, are, are you going to talk to me? Uh, excuse me, Sly. <laughs> no, no, really. No, really. Uh, honest. I, I honest. certainly will, Sly. Are you going to talk to me? Uh, yes. What would you like to talk about? I don't know. Uh, I know that you love to be loved. Not by you. Uh, no, no. <laughs> believe me, Sly. I was not being <laughs> Sly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I was just, no, I, I he asked See, me about, you no, <laughs> now, what's this? No, 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 I'll do this whole schmear. Here, here, this is it. No, 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 the uh, changes should be simpler, that's all. Just make the category simpler and hopefully... Uh, hey, go back over there, man. I feel I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, now he's looking. This is better. Yeah, sure it is. And this way. is my best side. Okay. You know, I have these huge teeth, you see, and this is a little better right here. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I hope it's simpler next year. And that's enough for the uh, NBA Awards, folks. Until next year, this is Peter Marshall saying good night. Is that right? I heard, you know, I watched the show, and you, you give away uh, a trip to uh, uh, an area in Mexico that I'm not familiar with, and yet somebody said you just returned from there. Well, I, we just got back from Puerto Vallarta. There were 30 of us that went down. It was called the Hollywood Squares Junket, and it was wild. We, uh, there was Karen Valentine and David Hartman and uh, uh, Vinnie Price and Karen and all of us. We all went down. This we is got, worse. No, this is fun. This is fun. <laughs> Listen to this story, Sly. We get on the plane, and there was Richard Burton. <laughs> You know, it really, it, this is oh, worse. Hey, Sly, will you... Hey, wait! Excuse me, will you look at me once in a while, Sly? <laughs> Go ahead, please. Anyway, we get on the plane, I'm and there, sorry. there's Richard Burton. Yeah. You know Richard Burton? Yeah. Right. And uh, he's on the plane. Yeah. yeah. I know Richard Burton. Big guy. Yeah. Big in the biz guy. Yeah. And uh, he's there, and he has nine seats all alone, right? Nine seats. Nine seats to himself. For what? I don't know. He didn't want to be bothered, but he had the first seat. So now you get on the plane and you have to pass Richard Burton, right? There he, there he is. He takes a shine to, excuse the expression, uh, to... Uh, <laughs> that's terrible. I apologize. That's tacky. That's really tacky. I apologize. No, but he takes a liking. How about that? A liking to, uh, uh, to Karen Valentine. Oh, yes, he was. Richard I'm going to get you. <laughs> <laughs> you know that, don't you? You want, you want me to go back there? <laughs> oh, let me stay there. <laughs> I thought it was going to say Blade. <laughs> <laughs> no, he really takes a liking to Karen Valentine. And she's there with her boyfriend, Johnny Hager, the Hager twins. Oh, yeah, I know. John. And so he's going to have a cocktail party. And it was going to be for eight people. And it wound up, all, all of us were invited. And now we're at this party, and he's mad for Karen Valentine. And he keeps saying, now remember the scene. You realize we're getting a scoop? This is a scoop. It's yeah, it's really true. No, it really is true. Yeah. I mean, it, I, I was there. And uh, <laughs> she's mad for Johnny Hager. I mean, and Johnny Hager, I don't know if you know the Hager twins from Hee Haw. He's about as real as you can get. That's I right. mean, he's just Great real. Point. And uh, Bert would say things like, Karen, uh, tonight you're with me. You're my girlfriend. And Johnny's sitting there. He said, no, no, you don't understand, rich baby. Uh, <laughs> Rich baby, and she'd go, Rich baby, watch him. She, she's everybody's girl, but she's with me. And this kept going all oh, night. He kept funny. going zap, zap, and Hager would go zappity do. It was wonderful to watch. It really I was. can't imagine that combination of Karen ba Valentine and Richard Burton, and Richard Burton. is mind boggling enough. But <laughs> Karen Valentine, but Richard Burton and, and uh, the, one of the Hager twins. 
I can't From imagine he-ho. him referring to me as Shine. I know. I, 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 I know. I know. I know. I know. I'll tell you one thing. You're not nervous right now. No, I, 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 <laughs> I heard something I can't believe, Peter. You got a successful show. You've just won an Emmy, two Emmys, and you're going to go to that jungle. You're going to go and play Las Vegas. Yeah, go to the jungle. He uh. really is. <laughs> Welcome to the Mike Douglas Show. This is Theodore Bickell. I'll be joining Mike and his special co-host, Sly Stone. With us on today's show will be Sly's very own family, Stone, prize-fighting champ, Muhammad Ali, and Representative Wayne L. Hayes with a look into the funding of political campaigns. Music by Frank Hunter and the band. And now, here's Mike. Confuse the world, I mean. But yet, that reminds me of the time Ed Sullivan, when he was on television, somebody gave him one of these signs, a stretch sign, and it was like March 20th. And he, could, he couldn't think of an ad lib, so it's just, Happy New Year out there. Everybody's going, what, what month is it, Alice? You know, <laughs> you were there. <laughs> hey, can I ask you Oh, my about goodness, you? I'm so nervous again. <laughs> Are you nervous again? Yes. <laughs> Tell me about your, uh, oh. your costumes. How much you spend on wardrobe a year? Uh, about 100000 200000 I don't know. Are you that. serious? Yes. 100000 a year on wardrobe? Yeah. Holy Toledo. It's better than buying a place in San Gabriel. <laughs> <laughs> You've never recorded anyone else's music, have you? And yet in one Doors of Day. Yeah, I was going to say, you, in, no, he recorded Que Sera Sera on one yeah. of your albums. She's a nice lady. Yeah. When she, did you when did you meet her, Sly? Terry Melcher and she's her son. Yeah. yeah. Do you have you ever worked with Doris Day and Ed? I, I just you know played the piano. She talked about the church and I did also. Oh, that's great. She's nice, man. She really is. Uh, and there's, to be and there's no uh, you know funny. Uh, I'm taking her out. Or she's taking me out. There's nothing of that. A lot of columnists. She's a nice lot lady. of col columnists yeah. insinuated. Right, that right. That's, that's she gave me a car. She gave you a car? Yeah. <laughs> she did. I'd like to meet her. I, uh, I collect cars myself. <laughs> yeah. I gave got, you a I car? I got about a, an 11, antique car? 11 or 13 something. Cars? Yeah. 38 Mercedes. She gave me. Oh, She's wow. so nice, yeah. Yeah. Why did she give you the car? Maybe I'm nice also. <laughs> <laughs> Is it true that you were a disc jockey at one time? Yeah. In San Francisco? Yeah. Look at all you cats and kiddies out there whipping and waving and jumping up and down and sucking up all that juice and patting and hipping each other on the back and telling each other who the greatest cat in the world is. What I'm going to put a cat on you is the coolest, the grooviest. Can you do a little the bit of what you did on the air? Sweetest cat. <laughs> bit of a stomp on this sweet swinging sphere. Mike Douglas, everybody. <laughs> the man in my little girl's life. <laughs> we, got, we got a surprise for you, Sly, because we got a piece of tape of him really actually doing that when he was doing this for a living. Really? Yeah, we got this. Now listen to on, this. Uh, we got tape? it on tape, man. Really? Listen. Now listen. <laughs> On and on and on, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats and kitties, hippies and squares, 17 pair six with Sly. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce Bad Bad Shawty. <laughs> You're not going to give me one of those Liberace lines. I'm nervous say, all over again. say you bought the station. No, no, no. They what station? What station was that? KSOL. Del Courtney, Les Malloy. How long ago was that? 
when you were doing about that? four or five years, I guess. Did you ever go back and see any of the people you used to work with there? Yeah. That must be. I always go, man. I came from the ghetto, and I, I always go back. It's kind of something kind of special about the city you're from. I mean, no yeah. matter how much travel, and you're famous all over the world, aren't you? I think so. What countries? What countries have you visited? Uh, Germany and France and England and Amsterdam. And How about the Orient? Have you been to the Orient? Not yet. Are tomorrow. you going? <laughs> uh, <laughs> tomorrow we have a, we have another show tomorrow. But are yeah. you going to the Orient? Yeah. When? With True. True. Where's True? Who is True? True. True Conker. She's in the dressing room. No, no, no. True is a guy. What are you talking about? Oh. <laughs> I thought you. I thought you said true. I thought you said true. 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 Well, yeah. We all sound alike. <laughs> <laughs> now don't start that again. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> you really. He. Funny thing. He. Yes. On yesterday's show, he kept telling me how nervous he was. I'm still nervous. Why? Why are you nervous? But look, I get nervous people, all the time. All these people. Look at the smile. I love them. I know. I love them. I love them. I love you. So what? I know. I love you. are worried about who's out there behind that? That's. Red light. I, I love my, I don't know why I'm nervous. <laughs> a lady there is pointing to that. I asked him about that on Monday's show, The yeah. Star. What, what did you want to know about that? Everybody's a star. You think it's the star of David? It is, isn't it? It is. Well, maybe David Capitalist. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to, we get. But I have one with five points also, like Muhammad. Yeah. Muhammad's with us today. Yeah, he's with me every day. You go all over the world. <laughs> are you going to, just before we cut off here, are you going to go to Africa to see him fight, George Foreman? Yeah. Are you? I won't miss that for the world. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we're going to have to leave you. We're coming right back with Sly and a lot of the My band, man. They're the greatest. I, this is my band a good Ooh, band? Ooh, they're so good, man. This, this next man is, we were just talking about I can whip him, too. You can whip Muhammad? Yeah. I, why, are you into the karate stuff? Well, yeah. I often wondered. I asked, I've asked a couple. I got to, I've, I've asked Sugar Ray Robinson. I've asked Rocky Graziano how a karate guy would, would fare with a great boxer. He'd win. And, mm, I don't know. They're all. I know. Awfully fast hands, man. No, but they wouldn't fight. Oh, by the time a karate guy goes like that, no, but they wouldn't he's fight. on his back. They wouldn't fight. They wouldn't fight. Karate is mental also. Yeah, but what if something occurred and they Then they'd fight? lose. The boxer would lose? Sure. We'll ask Muhammad about that. I'm telling you the truth. I, really. Well, we'll ask him. When well, he, comes he doesn't know. He's not, he's, in the, he's not into karate. No. How would he know? <laughs> well, we'll ask him. Okay. You want to introduce him? Yeah. You guys are very tight. You need to introduce him or whoop him or whatever you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, introduce him, Sly. Just anything okay. you want to say about him. Say something. I love you, right? Muhammad Ali. Yeah. 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 Happy again today, I can tell. Why do you, you I've seen you, I've, I've seen you never walk out with a, with a nice smile. You always, you well, look I like you're like troubled it. when you, you walk too, out. Because I am troubled. We have so many problems in the world and these shows are not getting on yourself. Just leave you out, but in general, these shows are so phony. Yeah. Everybody's laughing. That's right. Kee, kee, kee. That's right. Everything is a laugh here in America. That's ain't right. Nobody's serious. People it, hungry. But it ain't more, Mike, All kind of trouble. And kee, 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 kee. That's right. And That's the right. black entertainers. That's right. Kee, 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 kee. That's right. You and too. Black and entertainers. So kee, 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 kee. <laughs> That's right. Is there an echo in here? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm with it. I'm with that, it. Uh, I'm just saying, you know, sometimes, you know, I think we should use this uh, stuff. We ain't planning on going to church to, uh, now. To, uh, to, uh, get, uh, uh, attention for things where you need, you know, I okay. played a lot and I clowned a lot. And okay, you, sometimes you got I, a platform. I'm, no, I'm just, just saying this is why I'm not always, I get tired of Negroes doing all these, these people, audiences, he, 
That's what I said. TV, he, everything is so good. He makes a little money. I make a little money. But his brothers and uncles of mine are catching hell and hungry. And we on TV, he, yeah. like everything is so rosy. And I can't go off yeah, being but, guilty. Yeah, There's Muhammad, too many wise people. Muhammad. <laughs> I'm talking now, man. <laughs> Look here. The only thing we can do for brothers is to do what we're doing, be examples, and to be he, he, he happy, and to be intelligent like you are and like you always say. Thank you. <laughs> so, how do you feel about that? I, yeah. I in the, in the this, I went to intelligence to debate with the brother on television, you know, or even clown with him on television, but behind the doors, we can have a good time, but not with all the people watching. Yeah, we can, now, yeah, we can. Now, wait a minute, now wait. If that's we not, we'd be phony. Now, wait a minute, that's not being honest, what you just that's, that's said. That's what I'm saying, we'd clown be phony. behind doors. We'd be phony if we didn't I do the same if thing. I had a clown I'd hear with the, with no, the, no, no, you just said clown. I said if I had a clown, clown don't you agree with me? Yeah, we're going to clown around. If you don't like it, I'm going to whoop you. <laughs> how would you, how, sir, getting serious for a moment, we were talking about the karate thing, and I've asked many no, fighters, no, 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 no. how would a, a top-notch boxer like yourself manage with a guy who knows they wouldn't fight. I think, uh, I mean, if they did, if a boxer, they wouldn't fight. A, Not Muhammad. Well, well, let him. I talk when he's finished. Yeah, okay. That's right. Always remember that. <laughs> <laughs> they would not fight. I'm okay. telling you the truth. A, a good, a Muhammad. And a good karate band would not fight. Well, if let him uh, let him answer it slide just for what, right. what, what, how would how would See, it, how would you manage? Mean, white man doing that to me. <laughs> but I'm your co-host. <laughs> yeah. Half the action's mine. <laughs> now, how would they? How would they fare? I uh, uh, mentioned the co-host on changing subject. I've, you know, I've been offered this show to co-host Johnny Carson, Dick Cabot. Right. And the shows is just so much laughing involved until I've never would be a co-host until I can uh, have who I want on the show, talk about what we want to but talk about. But I told about. you you could do that. Oh, it won't be a show. Hold it now, let me see. Okay. Um, but I'm gonna say this. Um, the question, what was the question? You see what I mean? Top, you you can have, have who you want on the show. Expert. I had who I wanted to show you. A uh, top-notch uh, fighter. fighter and a karate man, the fighter wouldn't stand a chance because there's only one or two things he can do is ball his fist up and throw a jet with karate man. It's jumping and kicking and nah. falling down. Nah. It's, it's too much. It's too Put your much. arm up. You clowning, you clowning now. Put your arm I can clown on television. I clown backstage. <laughs> <laughs> the champ. That's right. That's the right. people's champ. That's right. right. Well, That's right. I'm not here to clown. So you know, <laughs> right. From, from time to time, we've talked about your, your, your training camp. Can, can the public attend while, when you're training? Yes, we have training sessions every day. Uh, 2 o'clock, we're training from uh, 2 to uh, um, 3.30 in Deer Lake, Pennsylvania, about 20 miles out of Reading, Highway 61 North. Mm -hmm. And we have log cabins and gymnasium and kitchen, and we seat about 250 people a day, and it's real antique. We have big 50-ton rocks lined all in the driveway with the names of all the great fighters. I'd like to announce not only is Kid Gavilon with me now, but Johnny Bratton. Oh, is he's a great weller way. He's oh. had a lot of hard luck, and Has he's just he doing nothing, and so I have a place for them all to live and plenty of food and, and plenty of money, so I'm sharing it with all the brothers. Yeah, that's great. Can we go up? I asked you this once, and I, I think you thought well, I was clowning. Can we go up and film some? Dick Cavett beat you to it. He did? He came up, but it wasn't, it's was just a little thing. I think you can outdo him if you. Yeah, he's very small. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'd like to do it. We really Anytime. Would. We're starting training tomorrow, and I'll be up there until we September to go 24th to Africa you, you fight, huh? To take this title back. It's going to be a major, major He's shock. How long will you be preparing for this fight now? Three and one half months. And you work hard every, every day? No. About five days a week, not I, every day. Every day is too hard, it's too much. I think Muhammad's good all the time. I think he's been training since he was born. You know, his head. Mm -hmm. His head is on, right? You think you're going to, you really think you're going to win that title back, Muhammad? Mm, I know I am. <laughs> <laughs> Get out, brother. You know, I want to ask you something. You don't have, at least you haven't shown signs of having what they, they used to call in the fight game the killer instinct. When, when you hurt a man, finish him off. I've seen you hurt guys and back off. 
which shows a lot of compassion on your part. But the guy you're fighting has that killer instinct. That's right. And I've been criticized greatly by people who I really respect for not going on and getting them. And I'm finished now. Next time, I'll finish them all. And is, and is your word still hold that win or lose, that's it? That's your last fight? Ain't no lose. Yeah, no, this. but he said win or lose. Ain't he no said lose. Himself. Ain't I know lose. that, but he said himself. Ain't so. no lose. I don't care. Okay. But, uh, we, expect a, we expect a good fight. Shouldn't be no trouble. <laughs> George is awful strong. Yes, he is. And he don't really hit that hard. It may come as a shock to most people because uh, he knocked Joe Frazier down six times. But he didn't stay down. No, and he knocked Joe King Roman down three times. He knocked Norton down three times, and they all ended on the feet. They don't, they don't know how hard you hit, man. But they were too, they weren't, uh, they weren't experienced enough to uh, recuperate, and they didn't have the footwork nor the speed. They don't know how hard Muhammad hits. Nobody. Honest goodness. Well, he's not, you knocked a lot of people out in your Muhammad career. Muhammad hit so hard, it's ridiculous. I'm telling you the truth, I know, I know. Did he, has he hit he you? Hits hard. He hits hard, I tell you what, I had a pea coat on. I went to his house, I had a pea coat on. He hit everybody on my pea coat without hitting me. You mean just? I mean, I'm talking about speed, buddy. Speed, I'm speed, I'm really. Brr! I'm talking about speed, <laughs> really. If I don't speed out of here for one of those things, we're not coming back. We'll be right back, right after this. You have, you have four children, a set of twin daughters. Yes, uh, daughters, Rashida, Jamila, they're three, getting pretty. Really, uh, and uh, Miriam, she's uh, six, Muhammad Ali is two. Your son is two? It's really something to watch him growing and getting big, and uh, my little daughter, Miriam, I had a uh, out not long ago, about a couple of years ago before she started talking, one or two words they'll say. And one day you wake up, she, she'll say something like, you know, ask your question. I had a friend with me, she was sleeping. And I said, we had a suite in the hotel in New York, and a lawyer friend came up, and I said, uh, I want some peace. I told her to go to bed. She said she was asleep. She kept faking, but she wasn't asleep. I laid down with her, and I thought she was asleep. And the friend came and was out in the front of the suite, and I tipped her out, and she woke up, Daddy, where are you going? First time she's ever, you know, thinking. I said, I'm going to the bathroom. No, the bathroom's in here. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> and, and I said, no, and then I went out, and I closed the door, and she, ain't no bathroom out here. <laughs> this is the first time she, you know. Really put things really together. Talking back with me. Does she know her daddy's a celebrity? Yeah. She Has she watches, ever seen you in action? A, we have a commercial on TV now, but I didn't know oh, that. What? Yeah, I thing. see that. She sees that in, in magazines, and uh, she hears people talking. Is she, uh, did she, didn't she go with you to a college one time when you spoke before? Group? Right, so I forgot the name of it. But she what was her reaction to that? Well, she was frightened to see all the people hollering like they did, but it must be a funny thing born into this, you know, like that's all she knows is. What do you mean hollering, They're asking questions? People, of yeah, you know. But like that's all she knows is crowds and people at her little age of six. And you know, I, I came into this after the Olympics, but it must really be something, you know, born into something like this. Your son, who you said is two, you want him to fight? No. No, I wouldn't advise no young fellow to fight. I would advise him to get educated real good, learn his arithmetic, read, write, get a trade, get a purpose. Because this, this is a gamble. This is a gamble. That's yeah, good. Sure. That's good. That's man. very good advice. Yeah. You have a lot of fellas. You have a lot of fellas standing on the corner, you know, imitating Sly, the Temptations, or you? Elvis Presley. But it's a possibility they may never make it. And if he takes this as a trade and don't make it, then life's a tragedy. I want to tell you something that, that I know you're aware of. I've watched a lot of young, young guys in, in boxing now, in amateur yeah. boxing, who are doing you, you know, well, doing the Mahat, the like Ali Sugar Shuffle. Ray Robinson was there. People imitated him when Joe Lewis was chairing Rocky Marciano. It's natural for them to want to imitate who's ever on top at the time. <clears throat> Did your yeah. wife ever say things to you like our wives say to us, you know, be careful when you go out in the car? Does she ever say before a fight, you be careful, don't get hurt or anything? Strange, like never. Never occurs My to mother and I, don't worry really? a bit. Do you ever, is it ever concern you that you could really get injured in that ring? Do you think about that at all? No, let me tell you, I guess it's because I know it. I hate, I, you couldn't pay me to be a jet plane pilot. 
you couldn't pay me to get you get in the ring with guys like George Foreman and you I was on a plane not long ago some kind of smoke alarm went off in it and smoke started coming off and stewardess running back and forth it's a scary feeling oh you know, what do you do in a case you look that down and you can't see nothing but houses, <laughs> and you, if an engine pop or something blow up, you, I mean, you just see death. You know it ain't no way out of this. Now, when that happened, did you pray? Mm. That's a silly question. No, it isn't, because, man, yeah, I'd be pray. well into I some prayer. I pray when it don't happen. Really? So I don't wait till it happens. Yeah, That's the get down, brother. See, I pray before takeoff. I said, let it take off Allah. I use the term Allah. I don't say Jesus. I say Allah. See, the book says, he who calls on my name shall be saved. And black folks been calling Jesus for 400 years and still getting hung. See, but we who call on Allah don't get we We free. We Muslims. We call on the right God. And I call on Allah. And I've been on planes and did everything. And I've had white passengers to come up and say, we glad you on this plane. Really? <laughs> wise ones. The average man wouldn't know it, but wise ones. Yeah. I said, why are you glad out? He said, you have too much to do. This fellow told me a week ago. He said, you have too much to do, too much of your people. You represent too much, and I know you are not going to go this way. And when I heard you in first class, I quit worrying about this plane. That's Some funny. people, seriously, they go on a plane and see a, a, a bishop, a cardinal, a priest, and they really feel better. Uh, they see five or six sisters, Catholic sisters. They really feel better to know that these people are on the plane. They feel God is with them. Yeah. I always, on the way in, if I can peek in there and get a look at the pilot, and if he recognizes me, I always <laughs> want to know what kind of a night he had. I check on that. I want to yeah. make sure he wasn't out. But to answer your question, like, uh, I don't, we don't worry too much about getting hurt. You get hurt in cars. People die every day. Race cars, you know, they hit walls and burn yeah. up. And, and just, if you get yourself in condition and you know what you're doing, you're not too much. Like a plane pilot, he don't worry about it. He knows how much the plane will take. You know? mm -hmm. And I don't, so I'm more frightened than he is. You're in the right mood for some Muhammad Ali poetry, Muhammad Ali poetry. Have you got something for us today? Mm. Little something that says, riding on my horse of hope, holding in my hand the rein of courage, dressed in the armor of patience, the helmet of endurance on my head, I started on my journey to the land of love. Yeah, that's nice. That's very nice. We'll be right back. You better be good. <laughs> you better be good. What, you mean in Africa? When he fights? You just better be good, period. Oh, he's going to be good. He's going to be in shape. Are you working on anything new for the fight? Because you always come up. You were talking about the bolo punch. Oh, yes, Kid we, Gavilan's bolo punch. We changed punch. the name to the ghetto whopper. The Ghetto Whopper? <laughs> I like that. Here's a man whose warmth and concern for humanity are immediately evident in his singing. He's an actor, singer, recording artist. Here is Theodore Bikel. Time to time, I get involved with a little-known folk opera that deals with a milkman who has five daughters and who speaks directly to God. It works better that way. And he says to God at one point, I realize it's no shame to be poor, but it's no great honor either. So what would have been so terrible if I had a small fortune? If I were a rich man, all day long, if I were a wealthy man, I wouldn't have to work hard. If I were a biddy biddy rich, idle deedle 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 man, I'd build a big tall house with rooms by the dozen right in the middle of the town. A fine tin roof with real wooden floors below. There would be one long staircase just going up and one even longer coming down. And one more leading nowhere just for show. <laughs> I'd fill my yard with chicks and turkeys and geese and ducks for the town to see and hear. 
squawking just as noisily as they can. And each loud would land like a trumpet on the ear, as if to say, here lives a wealthy man. Oy. If I were a rich man, all day long, biddy biddy bum, if I were a wealthy man, I wouldn't have to wake hard. If I were a biddy biddy rich, deedle 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 man, I'd see my wife, my golden, looking like a rich man's wife with a proper double chin. Supervising meals to her heart's delight I'd see her putting on airs and strutting like a peacock Oi, what a happy mood she's in <laughs> Screaming at the servants day and night The most important men in town will come to fawn on me They will ask me to advise them like a Solomon the wise, if you please, Reptavia, pardon me, Reptavia, causing problems that would cross a rabbi's eyes. Yeah, be a bye, bum, bye, ba ba bye, ba ba. And it won't make one bit of difference if I answer right or wrong. When you're rich, they think you really know. have the time that I lack to sit in the synagogue and pray maybe have a seat by the eastern wall and I discuss the holy books with the learned men seven hours every day that would be the sweetest thing of all if I were a rich man all day long, if I were a wealthy man, I wouldn't have to wake hard. Lord, who made the lion and the lamb, you decreed I should be what I am. Now, would it spoil some vast, eternal plan? I were a wealthy man. Uh, how are you? Hello. We've been on shows before. You know, while you were performing that song, uh, Theodore, I had no intention of saying anything like this, but Sly leaned over to me and he says, I don't understand that. Can you explain that to him? And yes. you're wearing that on your chest and you don't understand? <laughs> no, I'm wearing more than that on my chest. <laughs> but he doesn't, he's never seen the show. Oh, oh. Well, the man just wishes that you were a little richer than he is, but it's all, he's quite content with his lot anyway. Listen, I'm gonna do the show in, uh, uh, where is it? Across the river here in Philadelphia at the Latin Casino in you July and August. You the show at the Latin? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They usually go dark in the summer, but this summer they're going to go open. Uh, they're going to open for two shows, and they run them as dinner theaters. That's great. So I'll That's do the show there. Idea. You're invited. You're invited. Everybody's invited. <laughs> you do all kinds really? of music. I mean it. You're allowed to bring half your family. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I don't cover half of them. Yeah, no, do you know yeah. about his music? Of course are you, I do. Are you no, I'm, I'm stuck with a whole family. I know how many there are. I know, I can count. <laughs> what do you think of Sly's music? It's marvelous music. What do you want me to say? And if it were lousy, do you think I were going to say that? It isn't. It's good music. Thank he you. knows. Th he knows. Thank He's you. a musician. Thank you. Have you ever done rock yourself? No, I've done kind of modern music, what they call, but contemporary music. But I pick and choose what I like. I'm not... Uh, I'm not under 30, you know that. Mm -hmm. I know that. My mother doesn't know it. <laughs> Your wife knows that. My wife knows that, <laughs> yes. Fiddler on the Roof, is, it goes on and on and on. I know, it? it's, it's really an, an, an eternal show, this kind of thing. It's, it's marvelous. I played it in Honolulu, for example, for a um, 
quite a period. And you would have thought that you know, our audiences were mostly um, of oriental extraction, Hawaiian, etc. And they would come backstage with tears running down their cheeks and mascara all over the place. And I would say, what does this mean to you? A show about Jews in Eastern uh, Europe with uh, pogroms. And what, what does it mean to you? And they said, we know what tradition is. We know what that is. Hmm. What do you think is so appealing about Tevye, the character that you play? I guess uh, he is um, of the people. He's really a, a p out of that cloth. And uh, much as we would like to uh, aspire to higher riches and all of that, and we're an affluent society, we still identify. We're still, in that sense, a, perhaps a pioneering country. I don't know. I'm waxing philosophical. I'm maybe full of hot air. It may be something that's just a marvelous show, and that's all there is to it. But I, I tend to think that, that there's an identification that goes beyond that. Some people identify with the persecution of it, others with the simplicity of it, others simply with the music. It means different things to different people, I guess. Uh, you were quoted in Time magazine as saying that the dinner theater, as you pointed out, the Latin is going to do it, yeah. is the only success story in the theater today. Well, I'm, I'm, I think what I'm right in saying, first of all, I'm the president of the Actors' Union, so I, I, better ah, I know the figures. Yeah. <laughs> I know the figures. And, it, uh, and I've worked in dinner theater a great deal in the, in the last uh, couple of years. I'm, I'm going to be working up uh, in Connecticut. In fact, while this is on, I will be. So um, I, I know what the, the demographic picture of America is so that if, if, uh, if you pardon the pun, Mohammed doesn't come to the mountain, the mountain goes, <laughs> has to go to Mohammed. If the, uh, the people won't come to the theater for one reason or another, because they hate or they're afraid of uh, the inner city, the theater has to come to the people. So uh, you go out to the suburbs, you go out further than that, you go out into the, what is called the provinces, I guess, and also you make it palatable for people to have a package deal. You give them the dinner and the show together. Nobody can afford a dinner separately. That's 25 mm -hmm. bucks, and the yeah. show is 25 bucks, and your parking is an extra 10 bucks. Uh, before you, nobody's that rich. Uh, to enjoy that on a regular basis in dinner theater, but provided the dinner's good and the theater's good, if one of the two components lousy, then <clears throat> then you've blown the deal. Did you ever work for John Kenley in Warren, Ohio? And no, Central? I know John Kenley quite well. Got a marvelous much. thing going where he makes it. Uh, he prices the theater all one price, you know, mm -hmm. and everybody can afford it. And, and it's bring buffet. wonderful talent in, and they have a large theater. They can seat a lot of people. You're going to do Jacques Brel yeah, that's right. this summer. Mm -hmm. That's different, kind of a departure for you. Yes, right? and it's a departure for Dinner Theatre, too. We'll do it at Coach Light up in, near Hartford, Connecticut. Several weeks ago, actor George Papard was here and urged citizens across the country to support a new Senate bill in favor of public financing for congressional and presidential campaigns. Today we have with us a major opponent of that bill to express the opinions of members of the House Administration Committee. Here is that committee's chairman, Democratic Congressman from Ohio, Wayne L. Hayes. Welcome. Thank you. Congressman, uh, why do Politicians have such low credibility today? Well, I think it's partly because uh, there's so many problems in the world and uh, people are so dissatisfied and uh, there's so many things they want they can't aspire to and they turn to the government and the government doesn't satisfy them and uh, so they figure that uh, and they, give they, up. Don't, they give up. You know, uh, I was saying uh, just today that there isn't a government in the free world that has a majority government. Every government in the free world is a minority government. Uh, all the European countries have minority governments. Uh, we have a divided government here, and it's, uh, and we do have terrible problems in the world, and we don't have all the solutions as hard as we may try. Do you think it's uh, often the fact that those who have money get into office? Uh, well, I don't think that's exactly true, uh, Mike. I. That's one of the reasons that I, I'm in favor of strict limitations on campaign spending so seats can't be bought. Let me say, when I was elected to Congress, uh, I, I spent $3,000 to unseat a four-term incumbent. And I don't think money, I think the American people are too sophisticated. I don't think money will do it anymore. Uh, look what happened to Senator Fulbright uh, in Arkansas. Yeah. 
He uh, he spent three times as much as his opponent, he but he'd be. been in Senate 30 years, and his time was up, and the people didn't want him anymore, and the money wouldn't do it. I think he was a valuable senator. I've disagreed with him sharply many times, but uh, there comes a time, and I hope I'm going to know when my time comes ahead of time and quit before I'm defeated. 30 years, though, you can't be too sad about that. That's, no, that's I don't think so. Run. That's a long time. It's a long run. Would you ever get into politics, Mohammed? No, sir, because, see, when you people discuss things, they're not, they're not uh, our problems. See, I'm looking at the black people as a nation, and all of our problems, you all don't have nothing to solve them. See, we need a spiritual divine man, and I believe Elijah Muhammad is that man. We have prostitution problems in New York City mainly, and all I see is the black sisters being used by all type men, and ain't no politicians mentions it. We got dope problems, gang fighting among self, a lack of love for self, no respect for our women. We don't have no property. We don't have no land. We don't work 400 years to make this country the wealthiest country on the planet. None of you politicians talk about repaying us for the 400 years of slave labor. You're not the ones who slaved us, who lynched us or raped us, but your people stole the property and left it with you, and you're still guilty because you keep it. All the TV stations, all the lecture traditions, the Ramada Inns, the Holiday Inns, all the land, everything is yours. So ain't nothing in politics for us. Yeah, but as a politician, couldn't you help the blacks? No, because I got to have the white man's flag over me, and I got to represent all no, the No, you don't. I change. I disagree with that, Muhammad. I, you know, there are well, a lot of blacks in Congress, and they don't have the I white man's flag. Brother. I don't fuss at the brother on TV. No, I know. That's going to be niggas and fools and white gonna, people. I'm not going to fuss Let me talk right. to them. I'm talking to them. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna talk, to, I'm gonna talk to everybody here. Well, I'm talking to them now. I'll take your hand, I'm afraid. I'm going to talk to everybody here. Let me talk to them. I'm they talk asking to, me questions. I understand. This is, what, this is our problem. I understand. You understand? We got to get together. Well, we're not going to. And I don't think politics have a problem. I'm talking to brothers. No, but I want to change the color of the flag. I'm serious about that. I'm not okay. You talk about the flag over your head. If we gonna change the color of the flag, okay, that's a heck of a job. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is a, a job. See, now we're getting on stuff that don't make no sense. We were talking about something. I guess it makes more sense. I hope the people can look at this and see what I'm talking about. I hope the people can watch this show and see what I'm talking well, about. Well, they will. They look like that every day. Sure, the people understand. Black people do understand, brother. We uh, what I was saying was this, is that I don't think I can be in no office in this government and don't represent the country, which represents all the people. I'm not saying it's bad to represent all the people. I'm not saying I wouldn't want to represent all people one day. But yeah, but you do, man. Yeah, but now, wait a minute. Charity starts first of all, to home. get into charity office. Charity starts first at home. God helps those who help themselves. I got to help myself and clean up myself and love myself and do for myself before I can go to help others. I don't have time to help white people because there's enough white people to help white people. I don't have enough time to help no Jews. There's enough millionaire, billionaire Jews to help the Jews. There's enough My black brother. people to help black people. Right, so that's what we want to do. <laughs> now you're talking. So my program is only worrying about my people first. That's what I'm saying. And I can't be in no politics saying I'm just for the black people. It's not right. Yeah, where do you live, though, brother? Oh. At home. Jesus. We'll be right back, right after this message. Be right back. <laughs> Congressman, many times on a show like this where we cut away for the commercial breaks, a lot of things are said that I like to hear repeated. I'd like to, you to repeat what you said about the congresswoman from Texas. Well, I, I wanted to say this to Mohammed before, and we got a little side argument going. One of the brightest minds in the United States Congress today is a freshman congresswoman from Texas, a black woman by the name of Barbara Jordan. I think she can get, I think she can get to the heart of the problem about as quick as anybody. We had a meeting just a few days ago with a group of British parliamentarians to talk about common problems, and I took her there. I asked her as a special favor to go to this meeting. Yeah, but he's saying and there's so she many was, black uh, 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 people that have a lot to say. Well, that's true, but uh, there's a lot of white people that have a lot to right. say in Congress, but it and only can be that. 435 congressmen at any saying given it time. For 400 years. Well, uh, the well, blacks uh, now are getting elected, and uh, let me say this: Barbara Jordan was elected from a constituency that doesn't have a majority of blacks. Because, yeah, but what he's saying is that he didn't care about being elected. Well, I, he you know, that's, uh, that's up to him to go to decide that. That's not for me to say. But, but I am saying but that some black be. people are making a contribution in that field. 
But isn't it time that we all live together? Well, I don't think we can live it's time for living time together. Yeah. I don't think we can live segregated. I don't think you can segregate the Jews into one compartment, the blacks into another, the white Anglo-Saxon Protestants into another, the Catholics into another. I think we're all here in this country and we're going to have to live together and get along together. And uh, you, your entertainment wouldn't go if nobody but blacks went to it or paid or, or got admissions and your fights, I'll stop right there. Your fights I, wouldn't I gross what thing. they do if the whites say, didn't I want to say one thing. If there's no white man come to hear him, we got 40 million black people that love his music. He don't need no white audience. I just well, want to say, there's no 40 yeah, million white people the in point. this country. There's I'm just saying, million. I can't let you stay on the TV you, and say that he wouldn't make it if it wasn't for the white people. Well, I'm not saying he wouldn't make it, but I'm he, saying he wouldn't make it as big as he did. You're right, if we have white people promote it. No, no. I don't know if they say okay, too. Okay, now what he's, the black people, what he's saying is that it, it does not make you big uh, because white people come. Congressman yeah, didn't that. say that. He said your, your, I, I it wouldn't it, go I, as I'm big. He said, said. said, nor would your fights. And is your what he said. country wouldn't be if it wasn't for us. Well, they don't need that. America wouldn't be nothing if it wasn't for my people slaving and working for whole hundred years and you white people fighting in all of your wars. Yeah. Then you talk about if That's I right. didn't white people come to my fights, I wouldn't have no money. We built the country. That's right. We fought in all the wars. We were lynched. We were captured. We, we were murdered. murdered. And some of us, all were, some some of us were in on that. We, we, we want to give you a little bit. We want to give you some credit, Muhammad. But after all, you're 11 million out of 210 million, so you didn't do everything. The whites did something too, you know. You did do Everybody something. Everybody made a contribution. You did do something. You killed off all the Indians, then you brought us over and robbed us of Yeah, everybody. but what Mike's trying to say is that there's that. a way to say all of this without having any animosity. Exactly. That's right. Exactly. I buy that. Hey, well, sweet, ain't no animosity. Ain't nobody hitting nobody. Yeah, but it should not sound like it. <laughs> Words are more powerful than fists. That's why, no, it's that's a why animosity. That's I think why, it's a fairly uh, simple, uh, sim well, Simple. simplistic argument that we're having here. On yeah. the one hand, saying, no, why can't we all live together? Now we know that it's tough to live together, and we know that there are animosities, and we know that there's back dues and back pay and back uh, things that are owed to people and not just to blacks, yeah, to Indians as well, and to women as well, and to other minorities It is well. not simplistic. Well, there's nothing simplistic. It the man simple. and his wife don't live together in perfect harmony all the time. I'll tell you one you thing. Know, you they sometimes house, they have you problems. A, you take a house, you take a country, you kill off all the Indian, you kill off the blacks and you get everything is yours. Now you say let's live together without giving up nothing or repaying. <laughs> now you want peace. You got everything now. You done conquered the world. Now you want to be peaceful. Well, they ain't, people ain't resting. They don't want no peace. Yeah, but if somebody said I only care for whites, we would label him uh, by very ugly epithets. And if I said I only care for Jews and nothing else, I would be labeled as an exclusionary elitist. I only care for the freedom and the unity of my people. Everybody else has got it. Right. Not really. Uh, no, no, not true. Not everybody not true. else. I don't buy that. Well, I'll I tell you what. I bet you the Viet Cong, who we black people, not me, I wasn't fool enough to go, who those who helped fight, I bet you the Viet Cong is more citizens and can come here and put on a little suit and get more freedom and move in neighborhoods and put up business where Negroes came. I believe that. Oh, no, that's not no, right. I believe that. I believe They're that. They're under a dictatorship no. the just like the can, Russians. The, no, the Japanese means, yeah. can, the yeah. Germans can. Everybody that's not American can go and do what Negroes can do. So quit being hypocrites on this TV. The whole world, no Negroes, the lowest, Black the people. most down, right. the most disrespected, and the less protected than anybody. Well, where can't you go, Mohammed? And oh, what okay, can't I'm one do? big nigga. I'm a nigga, got $10 million. I'm a great fighter, so I can go. Well, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about the brother who can't on. pay his rent. Yeah. He ain't got nothing. Well, what Don't about the no white home. man who can't pay his rent? Well, There's a lot fault. of them. It's his damn country. Huh? He should get out there you and know. Do That's his fault. Yeah. It's his damn country. Not all the poor are black and not I all the poor I know. You got white. some poor white. Well, then I'm looking for my black brothers. You look out for your white brother. That's, that, that's what I was saying earlier. I ain't say hate uh, nobody. What, I don't want to hate nobody. Congressman, what, what Let's is... help each other. Help yourself first. What is, what is the answer? <laughs> well, I think the answer... <laughs> <laughs> if there people, is an answer... People want the truth. All this laughing and giggling. Now you're talking about... Well, you laughing and giggling, Use this TV dude. time to tell us what you <laughs> laughing and giggling like everybody yeah, But you see, the laughing and giggling the, is me. not phony. The laughing is and giggling. I have a function here. My function is to entertain yeah, and make as many no, people I'm out there happy as I possibly can. And man, I do it every day.
That's your job. That's right. It's your job. And don't say it's phony because it's not phony. It's I don't phony. have a phony bone in this on, body. When man. you want to know why I'm not coming on giggling my teeth. I didn't say that. Saying? I said you look troubled. No. I didn't say, I'm, why aren't I'm you giggling and troubled. laughing? I'm always troubled. Well, no, not I'm always. Because I, 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 you're in a world full of hypocrites. If I wasn't who I was, I'd be someone's in a restaurant. So I ain't got no time to be looking like I'm so happy. Yeah, but he said. My saying, brothers are catching hell and catching hell and catching hell. Dead yeah, man. yeah, yeah, that's right. And all you all hypocrites saying, oh, you a hypocrite yourself. Well, uh, well what's the answer, uh, Congressman? The answer is that, you know, it's easy to sit back and call everybody else in the world a hypocrite. Uh, I'm not going to call anybody a hypocrite. I think, uh, I think any everybody has person, right to own opinion. Any white person in this audience that says, oh, when I tell the truth, my people ain't nothing but a hypocrite. I don't, bl I don't hate black people. I'm going to say hate. And, and I don't see, well, I don't I dislike them. And I, I you know, you and I don't see why you should dislike Well, then you whites. get with the government and tell them to get together and unite and do something. But Muhammad, <laughs> you tell them to get together, you take your face and your complexion to the White House and repay the black people for all the work they done done, all the slaving. And Get down, brother. Give them some land. And the, 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 the last the reason. Don't about it and do something to repay. Well, we let's uh, maybe we ought to start back in Africa with the tribal chiefs who sold the slaves they into didn't slavery say you in the first place. That don't mean you, you know, you slavery. can't go back that and rectify 500 us. years of history. They, they didn't say you, you just can't do it. <laughs> They didn't sell you the lynchers. Let's be happy. They Let's didn't be sell happy. us to you the bonnets. Time for, time for living. We'll be right back. Uh, Congressman, what, uh, pers what is act? You better not go on with this. I don't know what I want to say. What, yeah, what, 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 act is currently, what act is currently controlling uh, campaign procedures? Well, we have a bill we passed two years ago which doesn't control spending at all, but it does force disclosure, and that's what brought out Watergate, because they had to disclose where their funds came from. They didn't. They didn't obey the law, but then uh, the people went to court and forced them to, and then we had the whole thing come tumbling down. Now, what I proposed two years ago, in addition to disclosure, and what I propose now is strict limits on how much anybody can spend. For example, in Great Britain, you're limited to $3,000 per member of parliament for a campaign. Now, that's not quite as low as it sounds, because their districts only have one-eighth as many people, but that's still the equivalent of 24000 Now, some people say, well, if you have that strict a limit, uh, an incumbent can never be defeated. Well, again, I point to Senator Fulbright, who was an incumbent, who spent uh, 700000 against 200000 and was defeated. And uh, uh, it, it happens. And uh, what I would like to see is a very strict limit on how much anybody can spend so, as, so that they can't, as I said earlier, buy a seat in the House. It's happening from time to time. We have a DuPont in the House. Uh, uh, who spent a great deal of money. We have a Heinz from the Pickle family in the House, but we also have a Wayne Hayes who spent $3,000 to get elected the first time, and we have a Barbara Jordan who spent less than $20,000, and, and I want to keep it so that anybody, anybody from any segment of society can run for Congress and have a shot at it. Well, as I, I want to tell you, this audience is really reacting to everything now. I think a sneeze would get a hand. <laughs> as, as I understand it, the major bone of contention is uh, over public financing of elections. True. Well, what some senators and some lobbyists want is to finance every campaign out of the till. Take your money and my money and give uh, the big proposal they have to give $90,000 to every candidate for Congress. Well, there are about 20 states where you can run without running as a party member, and mine is one of them. And uh, I want to tell you that all you have to do is get 100 signatures and pay a dollar fee. And if we did that in Ohio, if we had that law, that'd be the biggest ripoff since the James brothers held up that train. You know, there'd be 10,000 people running for Congress to get that $90,000. And uh, I don't think it'll work, and I don't think we ought to dip into the Treasury and do it. Now, I'm, I'm ready to go along with public financing for the presidential campaign to the extent that people voluntarily vote for it by putting an X in that box, checking off one dollar, fifty cents of which it goes to each party. But that's voluntary. People say, I want to do that. But I'm not willing to reach into the till and take your money and give it to everybody who wants to run, including myself. I don't want any of it. 
Do you have any idea how your constituency feels about public financing? Well, I go back there about every week. I, I average 48 weeks a year being back in my constituency, and I make two or three talks, and every one of them has a question and answer period, and, and uh, I explain this to them if they ask, and they usually do, and then I say, how many of you want public financing? Hold up your hands, and I haven't had a hand go up yet. Not only in my district, but in Tennessee, where I've spoken, in, uh, in Utah, where I spoke a month ago, uh, in uh, Michigan, where I spoke not long ago, in Chicago, where I spoke, nobody wants to dip into the Treasury and pay okay. for political uh, candidates to run for office. Can, can I ask a question? Is sure. it, is it, has it really been, uh, uh, in your experience, I mean, are, are there examples galore that people were actually prevented by their own person? or the meagerness of it from, from running for office. They always somehow, if they have quality, leadership qualities, if, and if they can prove that they do, somehow or another, they'll get the money together. Or some be, get the if, money. You're right. If they've got an outstanding quality that makes somebody think they'd make a good congressman, people will chip in. I don't want anybody to give big money to my campaign. We raise most of my funds by a $25 plate dinner, and I pay the hotel 12 bucks for the dinner. So I make uh, another 12, uh, not counting expenses. We take out a dollar for that on it. And that's the kind of contributions I want. I don't want any, uh, I don't want any Clement Stones from Chicago giving me any $2 million as they did to the last campaign. Or I don't want a Stuart Mott from New York putting in $2 million on the Democratic side. I, and my bill pre prevents that. It says nobody can give more than $1,000. That's it, over and out. Well, I guess it's laudable that, uh, you know, that if the slogan is that anybody should be able to run for office. They used to say that the greatness of the country is that anybody, anybody could become president. And I'm beginning to believe it. I am, too. We have to pause. Right after, we'll be back after this. Anybody. Because Sly and the Family Stone are with us today, we want to give them an opportunity to perform. So here in concert are the exciting Sly and the Family Stone. No, no, no. 
want to. I want to meet everyone in a group, and I, I think the easiest way, Sly, is for them to introduce themselves, don't you? Can you get in close to a microphone? We'll start over here, right into that microphone, and tell your name and where are you from, Jerry? Colorado. Where in Colorado? Erie, Colorado. Oh. Sacramento, California. You, your name, please. <laughs> That's my name. Sacramento, California. Gee, there's a place, a state named after you. <laughs> Hi. Pat Rizzo. Originally from New York. Sid Page from San Francisco. Bill Lauren from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Yeah, Bill. Call him Lauren. Rose Banks from Vallejo. And this is Sly's, Sly's sister right here, Rose Banks. Huh? And my other sister. My other sister. And your other sister? She's not here? Lauren Jadis. Oh, this is your brother, though. I was, I was, I, I, what a family resemblance. You could, he could go on for you. If yeah. you ever say, oh, seriously. You will, too. <laughs> Glad I didn't do it today. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what is your name? I'm Freddie. Freddie? Yeah. And this young man? Uh, Rusty Allen. Nice to have you here. Who's, is is Freddie older than you are, Sly? Well, sometimes. <laughs> No, who's, who's the older? I'm the older. Are you? Right. That's why I'm glad I didn't go today. <laughs> hey, you're, 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 it's really wonderful to have your, your brothers and sisters working with you. It's, it's nice, huh? Is he tough to work for, Freddie? Sly? No, he, he doesn't work for me. No, I mean work with. with. OK, I'll change all that. Well, you know, I, I didn't know what you Is talking. he tough to work with? Oh, no. It's not even like working with him. I mean, it's like he's the other half of me, and I'm the other half of him. I mean, he's a perfectionist, isn't he? Uh, I never look at it like that. I never thought about it like that. But he is, though, because I've watched oh, him. I've, lis I've listened to him rehearse. He, he knows what he wants, and he wants to get what he wants, and that's it. Yeah, I think we all do. <laughs> you going to do some more for us, man? Huh? You feel like performing right now? Yeah. Because we feel like listening to you. Let me get out of here with all this cable. Okay, Scott.
Sly and the Family Stone. See you tomorrow. Promotional fee paid by National Airlines. Fly National Airlines 747 service to London from Miami. The new and convenient gateway to Europe. Guests of the Mike Douglas Show stay at the Independence Ball Holiday Inn in Philadelphia. Join Mike and Sly tomorrow when they welcome Joel Gray, Richard Pryor, the King Charles Troop, filmmaker Cinder Firestone, and we're here for the Family Stone. Be there. Show. This is Joel Gray. I'll be joining Mike and his special co-host, Sly Stone. And with us on the show today are Sly's dynamic Family Stone, comedian and actor Richard Pryor, the unbelievable basketball antics of the King Charles Troop, and filmmaker Cinda Firestone talks about her film, Attica. Music by Frank Hunter and the band, and now, here's Mike. Those of you who were with us yesterday, we're not going to do that again. <laughs> oh, that, was that was heavy yesterday. It really was heavy. I went home and couldn't sleep because of that. Yeah, it kept me awake for about 22 seconds. <laughs> no, this is, it was really heavy, though. This has turned out to be a very unusual week for us because my co-host is a very unusual man. That could well be the understatement of the week. <laughs> he has been recognized as a founder of black psychedelic rhythm. There's a little bit of it there going on in the background, and blues music. And he and his group are giants in their business. So welcome, Sly and the Family Stone. <laughs>
long you've been telling me about being nervous. Yeah. Are you still? Are you, still, <laughs> are you really? Yeah, I'm nervous. Oh, I, I think I, it's our fourth show. I don't want you to be nervous all week. They told me that, you told me, I think, too, that everybody gets nervous, you know? Well, a little bit at the beginning, but uh, when well, once you're going to do it, you know. I'm still at the beginning. Really? Yeah. <laughs> You got something to be nervous about. Now, we're taping this show uh, ahead of what's going to happen, but you're going to be married in a few days. I think so. And the reason, you see, you better know so. Yeah. I should explain to everyone. That. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But right now, you're still a bachelor, but tell them about this. I going to say something else. Oh. <laughs> I don't know you that well. well okay. <laughs> but the... Uh, you're still a bachelor, and you're yeah. going to be married in a few days. And the reason I want to talk about it is because it is not just going to be a little wedding at the church. There are literally thousands of people going to be there, right? Yeah. How many? How many people in all? Uh, maybe thirty-three is the last thing. Thirty-three thousand? Yeah. Where he's going to share it with as many people as possible, I believe. Now, how? And I think the church is in, you know, in here. Yeah. I don't definitely. think it necessarily has to be any particular physical building. I think. The last time anything like that, uh, to my recollection, was, was, uh, was when Mike Todd threw a party for, uh, the late Mike Todd threw a party for Elizabeth Taylor for her birthday. There were thousands, and I think it was televised, wasn't it? Yeah. So millions of people saw it. Is this going to be televised, your wedding? I think uh, I'd like to share with as many people as possible and to use the medias that I have available or accessible to me. Yeah. Is anybody, to your knowledge, going to televise it or film it here? Not to my knowledge, but I believe from the way things happen that it'll more than likely be televised. I'll tell, you what, I'll tell you what I'd like to do. I'd like to send a film crew, crew of ours out, having just done this week. With I wish you'd come, and everybody, all your friends, they, you too. I'm going to be in the Southwest that weekend, or I would. Really, seriously, I have to go to Texas. Well, I'll be with you. Downstate. You'll be with me anyway. I'll be with you anyway. Okay. How did you meet your fiance? She's a beautiful lady. I had a social gathering when I wasn't doing this kind of thing, I probably. <laughs> <laughs> Who's doing the clothes for the wedding? Uh, Halston. Oh, he's a famous yeah. designer. Yeah. Famous. Does That's he right. do your outfits? Well, sometimes he does. Yeah. Now, you casually mentioned on yesterday's show, and I don't think you were being facetious, because I know you well enough. I asked, I asked Sly how much... He spent on his wardrobe, and you threw a couple of figures at me that I, I, boggled my mind. Yeah. You said 100000 maybe 200000 a year yeah, on costumes. So. Is yeah, that right? Yeah, I think so. Uh, why, why so much? Can't you get some well, hand-me-downs or something? I, I, that's, I do. Do you? Yeah. Do any of your fans ever send you things? Yeah. You, you wearing anything that a fan has sent uh, at the moment? Not right now. Yeah. But, but I will. <laughs> I want you. I know uh, that. I know that you people would like to to see some of Sly's costumes, and he has agreed to try some of them on for us today. Because I mean, they are. Uh, you know, Liberace looks like he's wearing street clothes <laughs> next to you, man. They're all street clothes, man. Really? No, not according to. But you you yeah. probably have to. I got one. I got one of these. See. Well, that, well, that you can wear yeah. on the street. I yeah. do. I wore this on the street. I walked to the show today. It looks like it. a tablecloth. You know what I mean? Hey, listen. <laughs> <laughs> it does look like a tablecloth. Yeah, though. this is great. I, uh, you had this I wore on that this to morning. The show. Yeah. yeah. I walked That's up nice, down the street. Now, is that handmade or is that easy? Yeah. yeah. Well, all of it, I guess, is. It takes it forever to, to make things like this. People have to do them by hand. Nudie did this. Try some. Nudie did? Yeah. Try some of mine. Uh, try something on. Yeah. I got to take some of my dress up. <laughs> <laughs> we got you. 
Where did we find this I'll audience? I'll put our coat. I'll, I'll put a... <laughs> right. I think they came over from the Bijou, this audience. <laughs> they screamed when you I'll put on a coat or something, okay? Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, you want to get behind the, the thing over well, there? Well, if I want to put on a coat... Oh. I had a belt. Well... Oh, well, I'll look for it. You go ahead and put on a coat. <laughs> what kind of a belt is it? It's a uh, mink, I believe. Mink? Yeah. <laughs> I think it was still alive, Sly. I think it left. <laughs> so he walked out, right? You know. It's a bit <laughs> There's no belt. There's no belt. That is wild. Sly, how much does a coat like that cost? Can I get a little nosy? Because people love uh, things like that. What about, uh... Uh... <laughs> what? How much, ladies? Take a guess. Five thousand. Five? Five thousand. That's for a three-quarter length. I don't know. This is 20. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, who's closest? The uh, 20 is yeah, closest. Yeah, I, I, I think so, yeah. 20,000? Yeah. That's four eighth notes. <laughs> <laughs> are the beaded things, are the beaded things heavy? Like the... Yeah. Can we, can we try some more on top? Listen, yeah. I don't want to say anything, but the belt is not there. Yeah, I know, about 2,000. <laughs> okay. Ooh, this thing weighs a ton. Is that as heavy as this one? Good, yeah, probably. Nice. You have to take something off, put something on? Well, you want me to? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> this thing must, this, I guarantee you. This, this weighs, this weighs about 25 pounds. Wait, I gotta, I gotta take this. You got it. Oh. <laughs> this is not. Wait, break it? No, 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 break it. Don't break it. We'll get it out. We'll get it out. I'll Help just, me. I'll just get out another one. Go ahead. Get one of the other ones. I can go out like yeah, this. Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> hey, help me with this. Right. Da 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 da. Oh, this is great. Oh. Hey, turn on. Huh? Sly, it says on the back. Isn't that nice? That is it. Is that rough to work in something that heavy? No, you gotta work in something this heavy. Yeah, also, <laughs> do you do you have anything to do with the, the overall design? Yeah. Do you tell? Do you? Yeah. What I thought about. Okay, we coming back? Coming right back, right after this. He's an actor, a comedian, and an Emmy Award-winning writer, and truly one of the most gifted, talented uh, guys that I know. He is really funny. I think I, I hesitate to ever say that when bringing on a funny person, but this cat is funny. I know, I know you, I know, I know. I know. Here is Richard Pryor. <laughs> notice on shows like this, I know how perceptive you are, that people sit down and they really and truly are uncomfortable. And so the first thing they, 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 they try to figure out is where to put their hands in. Now, it seems that everybody does that, right? Yeah. All, All right, right. okay. I'm everybody does that. Okay, okay. Well, I feel loose. Yeah. <laughs> Relax. You know you can tell if somebody's loose. I just was looking at Richie and he was sitting there like this. Yeah. <laughs> Clunch. Like yeah. Yes, my hands broke. <laughs> <laughs> Is this your first Emmy? Huh? Your, your first Emmy? Yes, first that I know of. Yeah, we <laughs> <laughs> Have you been nominated before for Emmy? Yeah, I was nominated last year for the same show. Uh, I don't know why I won this year, because I didn't write anything. <laughs> what show? Lily Tomlin special. Oh, yeah, that was yeah. a funny show. Yeah, that's beautiful, huh? Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So many kids, so many guys copy, I think, I think, but it's a good, though. They copy Richard. I do, too. That's right. You know what I mean? But, so he has not necessarily been nominated uh, as far Man, as goes, a lot but of he's dudes, been nominated. There's so many dudes copying you now, though. I mean, yeah. on the song side. 
on the song it's, side. It's, at home. it's ridiculous. <laughs> did you do did you do any of that at the very beginning? Did you copy anyone, Richard? I started out copying Bobby Darren. Well, don't keep on copying that. <laughs> no, no, you can't. No, no. I don't mean it like that, no, though, Richard. No, no, don't get okay, like that. Okay. I don't mean it. Like okay, don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was like, it's like, uh, Bobby, I was singing Mac the Knife and stuff. You know, I started out singing, trying to sing. You can do all yeah. that. Can you? Yeah. No, do the, you the people one? in the audience used to say, you can freeze the sing. <laughs> <laughs> you go right directly to the comedy. <laughs> Leave the singing alone. When you, you know, you're a very f guy, yeah. but you know, most guys think of comedy for themselves. Is it difficult to write for other people? You have, do you yes. have to know them very, very well? No, I wrote for Sanford and Son, right? And uh, me and Paul Mooney, right? We was writing together, and we'd go into the office, and Aaron Rubin would tell us how black folks acted. <laughs> so we just, yeah, so we, so we just write it down what he said, you know, and give it back to him. He said, "This was brilliant." <laughs> Keep writing this kind of stuff, fellas. He would tell you how black folks. Yeah, so I mean, but you can't deal with people because they get an attitude, you know. So you have to be cool, you know. How do how do cool. black folks act? You know, they act. They don't, sometimes they don't know when the play's over, but they act. <laughs> how, about, how about writing for a guy like Red Fox? Uh, Red Fox, see, you write for the character, because Red is about the funniest human being I ever met. In the world. Yeah, you know, yeah. side, you yeah, know? Yeah. And um, it's like very hard to write for him, but he likes to have stuff in the show that's real, that's all. He that's just right. writes stuff real. And all around there, they're going, oh, well, that's not funny, because it's not funny maybe to white people, see? They don't know, they think, because, like, black people will say to each other, you sure it's ugly. And white people get offended by that. Wait, I beg your pardon? <laughs> <laughs> My dad had this face. <laughs> you know? I love and, the uh, whole thing Red does on yeah, ugly people. Yeah, you so. know, and it's like, from the real side, I mean, you know, yeah. dealing with what you are. And we're pretty, like, coming from uh, most black people are really not affluent. You know, being poor, you deal with real realities, you know. And uh, people don't like to see that. They say that people don't like to see, but I think people are very sophisticated and really understand. Uh, I, don't you find that sly? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, he knows how to work with a co-host. See, not like that other cat you said. I to be. A guy came out the other day talking. We were talking. I'm and glad slide. to see you, man. I'm glad to see and you. Congratulations asked, on your wedding, man. Thanks, That's man. That's beautiful. You gonna come? I, I'm gonna be away. I won't be able to come. But right? you gonna come anyway? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there in spirit. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Joe, I wanted to say something. Can I say something to Joe? Why not? I'm glad to meet you. I'm having yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad to have you back oh. on the show. I'm Thank glad you. to have him black. <laughs> 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 I want to ask you about working with Mel Brooks. You did. You yeah, worked at Blazing Saddles. Blazing Saddles with yeah, Mel. We worked for five weeks. The man is a maniac. <laughs> <laughs> Give you an idea of Mel Brooks. I once said to him, "We have time for one last word on this show, Mel. Would you leave our viewers with one word?" And he said, "Cotton." <laughs> <laughs> and as we're going off, people are saying, "Did, did, did he say cotton, Mel?" <laughs> you know, I mean, he is just wild. It was. We was in a room five weeks, you know, and it was funny in that room. Working, it was five writers in there. <laughs> it was something else. I know. Five, five, yeah, five writers yeah. together. Yeah, we had a lot of fun, you know. A lot of fun. I had a lot of bad feelings about it because I was going to do the movie, you know. I was going to do Blade and South, so I didn't get to do it, and I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> you, then you still love to perform. The hell with Mel Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> you still love to perform, then, Richard? Huh? L then? What you mean? You act like I retired or something. No, but, I, <laughs> no, no, but you just won an Emmy for writing, and yeah. a lot of guys get into that thing like the actors want to direct, and they get hung up on it, and they didn't want to go I did the writing only because of Lily Tomlin, you know, or Red Fox. I don't write for everybody. You, know? you only write for people that you really dig? Yeah, who you I mean, sure. Whom you really think are funny. Yeah, because they're special people, you know, and it's yeah. like a lot of fun because, you know, they make your stuff come alive. That's the truth. You know what I mean? How many, uh, yeah, yeah, how many people do you laugh at that you see? Do you write your own songs, man? Yeah. Because I remember when I was up in your house, uh -huh. and you was calling it, yeah. da, da, da.
Yeah, yeah. And I was up in the house, and, I, yeah. and then I heard it on the record, man. I said, but I was at the dude's house. That's right. Yeah. I, called, I called you in the middle of the night. Yeah. 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 I called, and Sly would call you in the middle of the night, right? Talking about, hey, Richie, what you doing? Nothing. The car be there in 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you came in the morning, up. and some dudes come in to know karate, so you have to go. <laughs> 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 I don't say, I don't think I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't. I was, Can I ask a favor of you? You do something that just absolutely wipes me out. And it's, and, and if you don't, I know if you I don't know do it for me, I'm gonna slide to ask you. Yeah. The first astronauts landing on the sun. Uh, ask slide to make me ask. Please do okay, that. Okay, I'll do it. All now. Hey, this is, no, this is the first astronaut on the sun. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, uh, uh, I've asked people like Buddy Hagen, I've asked people like Rickles and those people what they laugh at. I'm always curious to know, of a very funny person, what makes them laugh? I laughed at Nixon when he was trying to explain his way out of Watergate. <laughs> <laughs> I like stuff like that, you know, real humor. Yeah. <laughs> There's an awful lot of real humor going on here yeah, today, isn't I like, there? I, I laugh, I laugh at... <laughs> I laugh at most all all the comedians are, are like you know are funny acting people people that are funny acting. There's certain things that make you laugh different times. You know what I mean? Little little subtleties. Takes like like you did uh, cabaret man. Like I really loved that song money 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 money. Where well, you did it. it was great. I wanted to say that to you. Thank you. I really enjoyed that movie too very much. You know it was very funny. You and Sly live in the same neighborhood, Richard? Uh no no we don't. <laughs> No, there's only, only, no, only one black that. person allowed to one neighborhood per section. Okay. <laughs> in Hollywood, you see, you have like, yeah, Bill Cosby living in one section in the Hollywood, and yeah, Sly living in another, and then Flip. Flip Wilson lives on the beach area, he has that covered. And they have their they have the token nigga in every section. <laughs> And they be watching you too. White people be watching you. If you have some fans visiting you, they go, "Are you the ones that live there?" <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's true. Well, you know, we don't allow too many around here. We're just checking. <laughs> where, did you, where did you grow up? Uh, where did you grow up? I grew up every place. I grew up every place. I'm still growing up. That's right. Yeah. I. Uh, you know I mean, I was born in Peoria. I came through this earth through, through Peoria, Illinois. Of all places. <laughs> That's where I come from, though. You know, and uh, my parents uh, were there. And <laughs> when did you... <laughs> so I came That there. made it convenient for yes, you. It yes, it where did. Yes, When did you leave Peoria? What age? I, I ran away from home. I was 23. <laughs> a lot of kids. A lot of kids. No, I was 23. I was really 23 and had an argument with my father. I said, well, I'm leaving the house, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you. <laughs> yeah, that was the best thing that ever happened to me, man. Uh, he, you know, that he kicked me out of the house because I'd have just been hanging around there trying to pimp or something. Yeah. <laughs> was it tough? Was it tough uh, leaving? No, it wasn't tough leaving. I was excited. It was all an adventure to me. It's still an adventure, you know, uh, being in show business, you know, because I look at it like, I'm, I'm looking at it from a different point of view, you know, like, because Sly, I'm so impressed with Sly, like Sly's my friend, I'm, I'm getting nut behind that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because he, he's my friend, you know, and I'm really excited, I say, because Sly Stone, he's so bad, you know, in his music and the stuff he does and his style, and he's my friend, and like to be, meet people like that really turns me on, because I know, I figure like, I was so brainwashed into not being nothing, you know, when you're little. Yeah. You ain't gonna never be nothing. I swear to God. That's you gonna just like your daddy. That's right. <laughs> what was your father like? I don't know. I never got to talk to my father much. Oh, you, you know? didn't have that kind of a relationship with him? No, I mean, he always talked at me. No, my father always <laughs> would hit you with anything. I swear you know to me. You, you know what I mean? My father, like, if I, my mother said, like, carry out the garbage. And I said, I don't want to carry out no garbage. He said, what? You don't want, mm hmm No, you don't have to carry it out. Yeah. yeah. As soon as I get this chair up, you yeah, carry it out. You don't care. You're making people laugh, but that was really, those were really My father very, didn't laugh. I know, but those were sad moments for you then. And, yeah, that was kind of sad, you know. But Richard is truthful. Richard yeah, tells the truth. Yes, that's right. I mean, listen, he's fine. Oh, that is rich. I know you tell the truth. I don't that. I know you tell the truth. <laughs> I know it. Yeah. I know it. Did you have brothers and sisters, Richard? I make believe brothers and sisters. In my mind, I was the only child, but I always made up the biggest dudes was my brothers. <laughs> <laughs> and the prettiest girls was my sisters. And the real pretty ones was my cousins, because you couldn't make love to your sister. <laughs> 
Every comedian that I know in this in war in the world, I know Joe will attest to this. They all have the same kind of upbringing. They were all from New York. They all came up from the Lower East Side or whatever. How does a guy become funny from Peoria? I've been, I've been to Peoria. I have nothing negative to say about it except it wasn't no, see, quite that exciting. I was fortunate enough that I, I'm not very. I don't think I'm very smart in um, in certain areas, but I'm very smart. I'm in tune to people. And I learned on the basketball court what I was. Because on basketball court, you learn a lot more than playing basketball. You learn your social standing. You learn you ain't no fighter, because dudes knock you out all the time. <laughs> right? And you learn you can't steal, because they catch you. So I learned I was funny. <laughs> you know, they taught me, they said, well, you funny. That's your best shot. Yeah. <laughs> when did you, at what age did you discover, did you know in here that you were a funny person? I'll tell you the truth, man, it was like my Uncle Dickie. I got an Uncle Dickie. <laughs> and he, bought, he bought me a cowboy suit. He bought me a cowboy suit, right? right. And I was in the front yard digging. Now, I was in the front yard, and I had on my cowboy suit, and all my parents were sitting on the porch, and I slipped in some dog poo poo. <laughs> <laughs> and they started laughing, right? <laughs> so I got up and slipped again. <laughs> so you know, I just like, kept, and I just kept slipping, laugh. you know? And you then they started the laugh. laughing, That's you know? funny. And I've been falling in poo-poo ever since. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm scared. Hey, well, don't let you fall, man. Man, don't let me fall. We ain't gonna let you fall. That's my stuff. We're not gonna let you fall, Sly. Wait, 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 <laughs> look straight ahead. Don't look down, because that's where you're going. Right. Don't look up. You're still going down. Right. So look straight ahead. Don't look down, going. down. Don't look up, because wherever you look, that's where you're going. Close your now, eyes. Look straight ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you got a better chance. Okay, now up. Wait a minute. Well, well, I get this thing up and on. We got you. Wait, go, slide. Okay. Okay. You just pinch it when he kisses. Okay. You think you're funny on a basketball? That's what I need. Yeah, I need a smaller one. Yeah, man. You got a baby one for me? Yeah. yeah this Today and the whole place was rocking the whole building. So here's the phenomenal Sly and the Family Stone.
another song. Okay, okay, good. Everyday people, so I guess everybody can. <laughs> One, two. Last time, the first time you heard before you came and co-hosted the show, I met a very nice gentleman who introduced himself to me outside, and he's in the audience, and he happens to be your father, and I want him to stand up, take a bow. Casey, would you stand up, take a bow? There's slide it in. I want to tell you something. Hey, hold this. I want... <laughs> Did you notice this? As he took the bow, he went, he stood up, he gave it this. Oh, he's clean. <laughs> hey, he's clean. Uh, that's beautiful. We tried, uh, you know, we were talking yesterday, I asked you if you did anybody else's music, and you said I recorded a song that Doris Stay made famous, called Hey Sera. And I'd like to kind of show you guys how to really get a beat going. Okay? okay? Yeah. So, okay. I'll sing this part. You sing the good part, huh? When I was just a little boy, I ask my mother, what will I be? Will I be handsome? Will I be rich? Here's what she said to me. Time. 
Promotional fee paid by National Airlines. Fly National Airlines 747 service to London from Miami. The new and convenient gateway to Europe. Guests of the Mike Douglas Show stay at the Independence Ball Holiday Inn in Philadelphia. That's square like I did it. No, that's not square. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll do it square. When I grew up and fell in love, oh, yeah. I asked my mother, Mama, what, what will, will I be? be? Will I have rainbows yeah. day after day? Here's what she said to me. Yes, Yes, I feel all right, but I'm I'm more nervous than I ever was. Really? Well, yeah. then you're not nervous today. Oh, yes, I am, though, Mike. Eh? Yeah, I mean, that's the truth. You know, you must tell these things. I know. You know. Have you had fun this week? Ooh, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to do a show like this every day? Well, it, here is okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because, yeah... Uh, you, 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 you handle it in a way that you, you, you seem to understand the, the uh, span, the, uh, um, the, what, what is so-called the, the gap, you know, between the younger generation and the old people, older generation. I think and we filled all the gaps this week. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we really have. Right. Okay. That's nice of you to say that, though. Well, that's true. I feel that way. I got a surprise for you. We got a picture. To, I can't wait to show. <laughs> this is Guess Who, folks. <laughs> Wait, get the rest of it. Look, get the truth. Get it. <laughs> I love that. I love that. That's great. Thank you. Look at that nice. I forgot all the shy looking little fellow. <laughs> yeah, shy looking. Did, did you know? You know you have a certain kind of magic, though. Really, you really do have. I try to get along. I mean, beyond your music, I mean, I just the appearance you make, the way you have a way of communicating with people without even saying anything. It's, it's really interesting. I've watched it all week. I, really I, I think I've been taught well. And the times that I goof are the times that I try to take it on my own. I see. You know, and try to get away from the, those things that I've been taught. Speaking of being taught, we happen to have your music teacher in the audience. I know, I'm so glad. I'm so California. Glad. Will you introduce him? So that Mr. It... David Froelich, Professor David Froelich. Would Frohlich. you stand up, Professor? Yeah. 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 <laughs> you keep the camera. Keep the camera. No. <laughs> you know, it's what an amazing resemblance on camera between you and Foster Brooks, the guy who does the lovable lush. Did anybody ever tell you that, Professor? That's it's, a it's incredible. <laughs> I'm looking at him on camera. I mean, he, he looks fantastic, man. And you want to introduce the lady sitting next to? Him? You know who that is. <laughs> I sure do. That she's the boss. <laughs> she paid the cost to be the boss. That's my mama. That's your mama. Yeah. Would you stand up and say goodbye? I love that. She paid the cost to be the boss. Yeah, she did. Yeah. She, 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 she did. Was he, was he uh, easy as a young boy to no, raise? No, I no, I wasn't. No? no. Did you, aren't you, you're very proud of him, aren't you? You must be. You must uh, be. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sly, 
Earlier this week, we talked a little bit about a friend of yours giving you a car, the friend being Doris Day, gave yes. you a 1938 Mercedes. Yes. And you said something, a figure kind of stayed in my mind, but I'd like for you to repeat it. You have a collection of cars. How many have you? About 13, 11, 13, something like that. 13 cars. Yeah, they, I, I can't drive them all. I are just, they all vintage cars or are some of them new? They're getting very uh, antique. We sent a, a film crew out in San, to San Francisco to, uh, to show our viewers some of the cars of, of Slides. And I'll tell you something interesting that happened while we were doing it. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at some of the cars. Uh, that's Nothing uh, antique about that. No, that's a Titan. A Titan? Yeah. Uh, who, George, who? George Barris. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, what is that originally? I mean, it's well, especially... I, I think it's a Lincoln or a Thunderbird or a combination of the both. And he just kind of freaked out. And he's good. <laughs> George Barris is good. He real. customizes the yeah. cars. In other words. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Now, you said your favorite... Oh, look at the back of yeah. that. <laughs> you said your favorite colors were red, black... And white. And white. I believe the flag should be that color. You know, and I'm not trying to, you know, but I just think Those so. Those are just your favorite colors. Well, I think the flag should be that color. I think yeah. Betsy Ross knew as much as she did with what she had to work with. But I think the red, white, and black encompasses oh, both. Now, it, that's a chord. Oh, now that goes back to the 30s, doesn't it? Well, it, it, it's a I mean, replica. Originally. Oh, it's a replica. Yeah, and the, well, it started off to be a replica. But the car originated in the 30s, I believe, in the late 30s, if I'm, I don't, if I'm not... Yeah, I know I you know. I believe so, yeah, I'm yeah, pretty right. sure. Because that... Oh, that's incredible. That, that's a treasure chest. <laughs> <laughs> and I think there are tools in there. Somewhere. What's a car like that worth, uh, Sly? I don't know. I, would, I don't want to sell it, so I don't know what it's worth. <laughs> you don't remember what you paid for it? Well, I didn't pay very much for it in the beginning. I don't like to say you know about money. I know, I know. No. Okay. That looks like and, a, and a Model A. A friend a. of mine, uh, Joe Hicks in Hollywood, uh, gave me that car. That's a Model A Ford, isn't it? Model A or T. Model A, that one is. Yeah, it's a pickup. Yeah. Now that is what? That looks like an old... And that started off Bentley, to be a, a Doris Day's son's car. And he sold it to an engineer who in turn sold it to me. It's a Rolls-Royce Bentley. Mm -hmm. It's in the steering's on the right, so you get the chance to be confused part of the day. Who keeps them so beautifully for you? A friend of mine by the name of Twilight. His name is Rene Angelot, but I call him Twilight because he's spacey. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 there's a 38. Well, you missed that. Is that the one, where, the, oh, the one Doris gave you? Yeah, there? the black one. What is this we're looking at? That's a, a Mercedes too, also. It's a 450 SLC, but mm. you know, some of the cars aren't there that I some think... Some of them are really new. Is that the 38? That's the 38, That's the 38 yeah. Mercedes yeah. that she gave It kind of looks like it just pees, oh, you that's know. That's wild. It's <laughs> a wild car. Yeah. Have, have you ever raced any of your cars? I'm going to. I'm going to race the, uh, Tommy Smothers' brother. <laughs> you going to race Dick? Yeah. Do you have a license? Well, I don't know what you need to race. No, do you have a driver's license, though, don't you? Uh, yeah, I just got one. Do you have, have a special... You just got a... Yeah. You just got a driver's license and you're going to race Dick's mother's? Yeah. I... But I've been... I know how to drive, or I would have tickets when I didn't have a license. I see. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, but, yeah, but you have to know a little something more about just driving. No, I know, I know how to race. race. Car. I know how to race. You know how to race. I think from uh, being uh, raised in the streets, you kind of learn how to get away. <laughs> you know... Uh, and I know how to drive pretty good. Oh, we're going to meet the, the guys you're talking about in just a moment, and I'm looking forward to it. Meet we'll be right back. Sylvester the second, this is Sly's little son. Look at him. Look at him. Isn't he beautiful? Uh, uh, hey, friend, I want to thank you for a delightful week. It's been absolutely you. a tremendous experience for me and thank for you. our viewers thank having you. you here all thank together. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you want to keep him out here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What do you want? Yeah, I'll go Yeah. Okay. Uh, you see on the song, he, he, uh, he, he sang on the song. Oh, he sang? Well, he, uh, yeah. 
Yeah. You know what he wants? He wants to chew on that. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Everything goes to the mouth at that age. What you say about my baby? Wait, 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 wait. We gotta get him make a sound. Uh, okay, okay, do it again. Okay, do it again. It's cool, it's cool. Uh, Paid by National Airlines. Fly National Airlines 747 service to London from Miami, the new and convenient gateway to Europe. Guests of the Mike Douglas take Show stay at the Independence Hall Holiday Inn in Philadelphia. We'll take you Occasionally, I, I walk out to the audience on the breaks and, and ask the people if they want anything. You know, kidding me. And a little girl says, yes, I want a hamburger. I said, how would you like it? She said, medium with ketchup. And here it is. <laughs> you didn't hear her say, what about the Coke? <laughs> oh, you know who that is? <laughs> Are we on the air? We're on the air, yeah. Backstage. 
Backstage is a guy who's been called a, a pop genius, an energy machine, a great creator against the wall rhythm and blues. And... Kissinger can negotiate his contract. That's right. <laughs> and after a week as my co-host, I feel I feel I can say he has a remarkable personality, and I want you to welcome Sly Stone. Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel today? Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Still not a bummer. What's happening? What's going on? What's going on? Oh, okay. Yeah. I was worried about you because we called. How are you doing, Scott? Which way? This way? Oh, yeah. Okay, this way. We called and somebody said we were going to go at 7.15 and somebody said we were 6 o'clock. Rich is always Sly's in, Sly's in New York. And I thought, and somebody told me you were being driven down. I said, well, no way he's going to, but you flew down. You know, Sly, you know, Sly is such a ladies' man, the wicked witch of the West gave up her shoes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, Richard. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> All right, man. Let you me check my there. breath. I thought you were going to do something else. <laughs> <laughs> I got to be cool I got talking some, to I you, I got some pay, though, brother. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're, you know, you're getting... This is a very comfortable medium for you. You know, the first time you came on the show when this Tommy and Dickie's mothers were here, yeah. you were very nervous. Yeah. You? And you told me you were nervous. Yeah. But you're not nervous anymore on TV, are you? Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of a reaction did you get to your co-host week with me? Good. The best ever, Mike. That's wild. That's the best great. ever. Yeah. Everybody thinks you're very, 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 very hip. Thank you. And you know, when you were here, it was a couple of days before your fantastic wedding, which took right. place at the garden. Right. I want to ask you something. Did you really have a streaker at that wedding? I don't know of one. No, but we, I read. It's possible. I read there was a streaker at the wedding. I think there were a number of them at there the party. There was 20,000 people there. <laughs> yeah. Over, over 20,000. 20, there were 22,000 people. 22,000 people. Yeah, and there ain't enough clothes for all them people, so you can't. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to imagine, there got to be 200 people without no clothes. Did the, at least. Did the bridesmaid wear black? Seriously? I didn't see all those people. The bridesmaid. The bridesmaid. Did right. she wear black? Because that that's racial? what I had nothing to do is with it. Is that racial, brother? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, is, is actually that you out of pocket, I read Mike. that. I think he out of pocket yeah. myself. Yeah, I mean, you're trying to play. I mean, we didn't want to say nothing, man, but that's cool. I mean, go slide. You know what you're doing, man? I don't know I'm I just came on. on the show to do the thing, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> About the black brides, man. <laughs> Hey, you know what? You know what happened, though, Mike. No what? I got in trouble on uh, hey, with, with, with my mother-in-law. You, know, you better leave me. All right, Richard. You better leave me alone, oh, man. I got a partner backstage to hit Thor and fast. <laughs> I told Ali he was going to win. He got hey, wild. Hey, I knew Ali was going to win. He got crazy on me on the show. I man. don't remember. I didn't yes, see that show. I, I ain't cleaning I up for you and Ali. I forgot about you. I, I forgot about your music. Yeah, that was quite a show. I'll never do that, man. You got to shed it. Say, man. They gonna think something's. You know. <laughs> hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. I got, no, no, I, 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 got, I got in trouble. I told um, uh, Geraldo Rivera. Is that his name? That's his name, right? Yeah. Geraldo, 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 Geraldo Rivera. That's yeah. why you say that when you go right. to college and come out. Uh, that uh, my, my mother in law played in the Planet of the Apes. And she did, but she's a beautiful lady, you know. And uh, she called me up screaming, man, because naturally everybody would think that she, well, by saying that, I didn't think you're playing, get off the floor, man. Planet Ace. All right. Okay. No, I got to see you. Okay. Just, no, no, come on. Okay, man. home. You going to do me like that? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now what? <laughs> <laughs> I only got up because you were serious. What's happening? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh man! Well, watch me find a place. This so your mother-in-law got upset. It, it, she got upset, but she's not upset anymore. She's a great lady. Yeah. And you wanted? Why'd you bring it up, Sly? <laughs> because I was, if she's not upset anymore, why did you bring it up? Because you talked about the marriage and twenty-three thousand oh, people streaking. 
And I wasn't going to let you talk about something like that and black people, the black mother-in-laws and stuff. Oh, no, 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 oh, no, no. I, I, don't play, I don't play that, Mike. Oh, that's right, Mike. I told you you were going to mess up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you're right. Look at the Mike, trouble I've been. I'm only going by what I read. You was backstage <laughs> telling me, I'm going to bring it up about the black. I said, Mike. <laughs> You're in trouble, Mike. Yeah. Mike, don't do that, man, because Sly don't play that. You say, oh, I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Mike, hey, Mike. They told me that I was the only one, and I am, that can make Richard play drums. I believe Richard I heard can, something about I can that. make him play some drums, buddy. Well, can you wait till we stop and sell something, yeah. and then we'll come back? And, will something. you sing if he plays drums? Yeah, we'll be right back. left you, Sly was saying on yesterday's show that Richard would play drums on this show. It's like a soap opera. No, you were going to... You, <laughs> you said you could get him to play drums? I'm scared uh -huh. you get two black people in a row. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, you going to get him to yeah. play drums? Uh -huh. What's the screen for, Sly? It's like in Jay's clothes. Was this part of your act or what? No, well, you introduced me to a lot of clothes. There's a hospital bed behind show. that screen. I wish you would wait till I quit talking. Oh, I ain't gonna wait. <laughs> you gonna wait. This time. Oh, okay, I'm gonna wait, Brother. home. Okay, home. You gonna play drums? You gonna play drums? <laughs> he is hurt. I know Gilmo. Like I'm you know, right. Mike, the certain, the certain black people don't understand the All right, don't you start that. Of, uh, show don't you start. I mean, don't you start that. I mean, we here are striving for a better future for... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, last time we had a big screen, remember? Yeah, we did the fashion show. And the government took all my clothes. Oh! The government took your clothes? I... Yeah, my... Oh! <laughs> You had to give them back because you closed up the mint. No, and. Uh, <laughs> and cars. And cars. Yeah, they took them. But you get them back? You must have. There, yeah, there. I got them back. Ain't okay. no back for Sly. It's Come only on, do forward. the thing. Do the thing, but get him to play drums while you're okay. doing it, okay? Play drums, bitch. Oh, Come I on, got man. Cover. Okay, Come on, brother. But walk like this here, you know. Like you, you know, stroke it. Say, man, why they got us Come doing on. that? Listen, can we say something? Why they got us doing this on this show? How did it end up this way? It started out good. We was going to have the woman come out and we're going to yeah, lay mean, her down and no, make we pastries. Were, we weren't going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is not my medium. Okay, Richard. You fly first and then. then no, no, Richard, go play drums. I ain't going to change clothes with you, sucker. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna play drums. You change it. Tick the boom, tick the boom, tick the. No, chop, I don't do it fast, man. Go I'm gonna pull the else. curtain down as soon as you get Ask to the. Question. Hey, Sly, tell me, is it true that before your name was Sly, was the? <laughs> Sly? They used, to, they used to call me home. Hey, Sly. Uh, All right, I'll get to rule on you. Mo most fellows have. Uh, I will get to rule on you. <laughs> Richard. You can't get nobody on me, Sly. I got Teru and her You can't Great get Teru and Teru's mama. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Give him a get there. No, he don't. Woo! Hey. Now, get, now get, do, do, a, do a song for us. Come on, Richard. Come on, Richard. Come on, Richard. Sly Stone and his new drummer. I got a guitar. What is it? Oh, you didn't tune it, Frank. Really? 
I'm gonna do the best I can, do the best you can. Thank you. 